Hello, Church. It's Pastor Jeremy coming to you from the Parsonage with another weekly devotion. Today, we're going to take a pause from our series on the Covenant Prayer in order to talk about one of the most meaningful days in the church calendar, the holy day called Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the season of Lent. Lent has its origins in the early years of the Christian faith. Back in those days, people who converted to the Christian faith were often coming to the church from some other religious tradition. Many of them had very little knowledge about the basics of the Christian faith. And so the church started holding classes for these new converts in the weeks leading up to Easter. Easter was the day when most baptisms would take place. Later on, people who had wandered away from the church used this time to fast and repent and make their way back to the table of Jesus. Now, this time of preparation and repentance was eventually set at 40 days in order to match the 40 days of fasting and preparation that Jesus spent in the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry. The story of Jesus fasting in the wilderness was not the only story that shaped the practice of Lent. In the ancient world, there were three ways in which people demonstrated humility and repentance before God. In addition to fasting, some people, when they were demonstrating grief, would put on sackcloth. Sackcloth was a rough and scratchy material that was made from the hair of a goat. A person might put on sackcloth in order to intensify mourning when a loved one passed away. Or a person might put on sackcloth to show that they were truly sad and grieving because of their sins. In times that called for intense mourning, in times of national calamity, in addition to putting on sackcloth, people would rub ashes in their hair or smear their face with ashes. In the book of Esther, when the emperor announces an edict that will lead to a genocide against the Jews, everywhere the edict is read, the Jews begin fasting, and many of them put on sackcloth and ashes as they pray for God to intervene. My favorite example of this sort of grieving and repentance comes from the book of Jonah. When the prophet Jonah goes to the wicked city of Nineveh and announces that God is going to destroy the city for all of its sins, all of the people, from the king on down, begin fasting, and they put on sackcloth and ashes. The Ninevites are so desperate to show the sincerity of their repentance that they even put sackcloth on their animals. If you hadn't realized that Jonah is a sort of a dark comedy when the giant fish showed up, surely the image of dogs and cats and donkeys walking around in sackcloth and ashes ought to make you giggle a bit. In the story, God is so impressed by this act of repentance that God has mercy on the city. Although the season of Lent dates back to the earliest years of the Christian faith, Ash Wednesday hasn't been around for anywhere near that long. The first Ash Wednesday services took place about a thousand years ago, and Ash Wednesday really only became popular in American churches in the 1970s. Even though this tradition is only a thousand years old, it's still one of the most powerful moments in the church calendar. We draw on each other's foreheads the sign of the cross. The ashes are a sign of repentance and grief and our own mortality. We hear these words that echo the words God spoke to Adam and Eve as they departed from the Garden of Eden. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The sign of the cross reminds us that our sin, our selfishness, our indifference and our injustice come at a terrible price. But the sign of the cross also hints at God's forgiveness and a hope that God's love will find us even after we have returned to dust. Today at the church, we will have three opportunities to receive the ashes. From seven until nine in the morning, you can pull through the parking lot for drive through ashes. At noon and at 5.30, we will have a brief gathering for ashes and prayer in the church sanctuary. 
We hope that you'll make it downtown for one of those sacred moments. If you can't make it downtown today, it would be perfectly fine to ask someone to trace the sign of the cross on your forehead, or even to trace it there yourself. Even if you don't use ashes, even if it doesn't leave a mark that others can see, you will know it's there, and God will know it's there. And Jesus taught his disciples that sometimes the repentance that only God can see is the most powerful repentance of all. Would you pray with me? God, trace a cross upon our hearts. Make us humble and truly sorry for all of the ways in which we turn away from you and from one another. Carry us through this season of Lent that we might grow in love during each of these 40 days. In Jesus, who leads us into the wilderness, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for spending some time with us today. I hope to see you downtown sometime today. If you can't make it, know that my heart is with you and God is with you wherever you are. You can find a new devotion right here next Wednesday at noon, just like usual. Until we gather again, keep the faith and keep on keeping on.